I'm Paula Mould. And I'm Lee Shenton. And we are here interviewing encaustic artist Julie Rathall. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm just having an echo here. So, um, day four of interviewing artists. Lee and I have gotten together. We're interviewing artists who want to talk about their work, um, allow us to get to know them better, and share a bit about who they are and what they do, as well as um, what it means to work with Lee and I. So, Julie's here from the UK, and I'm going to read her little blurb that she sent us, and then we will jump into the interview. So, Julie is a fine artist based in, oh my God, I can't can't read that. Hertfordshire. <laughs> my Canadian, yes, my Canadian this is showing. In the UK, she specializes in the ancient art form of encaustic painting, which means she paints with hot molten beeswax. Having been taught that art was just a hobby, she didn't believe a career in the arts was possible until eight years ago when she won a competition at the Tate Modern in London, which changed everything. Julie Dow creates individual works of art filled with texture and light and sells them through her website and social media channels. She also teaches her encaustic painting skills to others. She loves to share the joy and therapeutic qualities of wax painting and believes something magical happens during that exchange. So nice to have you on, Julie. Hello, thank you for inviting me. Awesome. Yeah, fantastic to have you on, Julie. Um, and before we get cracking on with the questions, do you just want to share a little bit with us about how you got to be right here, right now, with Paula and I? Oh, I don't remember how I came across you two ladies. I think certainly it was a group on Facebook, but I remember going into your creative visionary group. But the one thing I really remember is that you sort of said welcome to everybody and you used to count how many people were in the group. And I was in the the one 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 cohort that came in. <laughs> <laughs> so I just they really stuck out for me and you would uh, yeah, you were on there live all the time and you'd do your gin o'clocks at on a Friday afternoon and just yeah, the just the energy in that group was brilliant and it was um, just everybody in there was great. So oh, that's when I first came across you in the ladies. That's awesome. You're also yeah. there morning, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago, wasn't it, Paula? Yeah, it feels like forever, a lifetime ago. It was only last year. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, I think maybe we even met through B-School. You were in B-School, if I recall correctly. So yeah, I, I was it might be a B-School artists group or yeah. something like that. Yeah, Yeah, because I've been posting in there as well. So that's awesome. I mean, everybody sort of connects in fun ways. But I'm curious um, if you could share a little bit about Encaustic itself, because a lot of people don't know about the medium and how amazing it is. It's obviously something that I, obviously, it's not obvious. Something that I have done and studied and enjoyed and loved. But I want to hear from you because you live it day in, day out. So let's uh, give us a bit of what Encaustic is, um, how amazing the medium is, and why more people should be doing it. Okay, so, well, Encaustic, I think the word trips people up for a start. Encaustic literally just means to burn. So it's actually the process of painting with hot wax. Um, and at such a wide scope, people can use it. So it can, um, it, it can be used in really high quality fine art. Um, but it, equally, complete beginners can just have fun with it, just painting in a real basic way. But it's just so therapeutic. I saw it in an exhibition um, there's a, a, that I was at. And I, maybe something just strikes you and it just absolutely stopped me in my tracks and I just had to find out what it was and how it all worked. But it's just, I, know, I used to love playing with candles as a kid. I'm quite tactile. I love that, you know, all that sort of thing. So just the application of it, it is just, it just goes on smooth. It's got that kind of melt, you know, that consistency of melted chocolate when you're applying it. And it's just like, oh, it's, it, there's just something really magical about it. Um, so yeah, I kind of started off painting with it in a very basic format and then I went on and saw, I just, I learned everything about it that I could as much as possible. Um, I saw one lady setting fire to her painting and I was like, I need to know how to do that. So you can, you can literally use a blowtorch and set the whole thing alight, which creates these amazing patterns. I was like, I, that, that's what I need to do. Um, and then I went on and I saw some portraits that have been painted in it, so skin tones. Um, so yeah, to say it kind of has been hooked is, uh, is an understatement really, but there are just so few people that know about it. People haven't heard of it. It's, it's certainly in, in the UK um, and Europe is my, my experience. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I've 
found myself. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's delightful to see how your face lights up when you talk about it. it. You know, you get this kind of real sense of emotion about how you feel about it. It's really wonderful to, to, to see that. Um, my enthusiasm gets then infused so I don't know but yeah so, totally yeah. because I, I, I mean I didn't know I mean I didn't know that much about encaustic art although I there, there are a couple of people in the US who I who I followed and absolutely loved what they do so when you joined our group as an encaustic artist I was so excited because I thought you know here's something that we can have first hand of and Paul has done a lot of encaustic work herself so um you certainly inspired me and I definitely want to come and do one of your courses when we can when we can get back to normal and do all of that mm -hmm. stuff again at some point or other. Definitely. Yes, fantastic. So um, tell us, Julie, obviously, I mean, you've told us what you love about that, but I mean, in terms of the, of the work that you are doing now, is there something that you really, really love about what you do? Tell me, sorry, tell me something I love about what I'm doing. You yeah, say? is there something in particular that you really, really love about your work, whether it's to do with your art or your business in general, you know, just kind of in general? Oh, yeah, I mean, I just, do you know, it doesn't, it, I think what I love the most is it doesn't matter what is going on outside the door, we can go, be going through the biggest pile of ah, that there is going. But as soon as I shut myself away, I've got the radio on, I'm in my own space and I'm doing, I'm creating. It's just like, I just I always say I leave my troubles at the door and whether that's me painting for myself or whether that's people coming into my workshops um, or even the online courses that I do, there is just, it just gets you out of your head. You kind of just get back to that place where, I don't know, just all the craziness just stops. And I, that is the thing that I, that, I mean, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing really. I, I love it. And um I mean, I need that for myself, but I also like to, you know, if I can share that with others in some way through what I'm doing, then, then that's what, I, you know, that's why I'm, I'm really doing what I'm doing, and what I love about it, I guess. So, but I think because I never painted before, I, it's almost like I'm making up for lost time. I've got to I really want to be doing, you know, it's what I want to be doing. It's what I'm just passionate about. It's what I, yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. So professionally speaking, uh, oh wait, I'm skipping a question. What's the biggest challenge you have overcome as an artist? Oh, I think, oh, to narrow it down to one, probably visibility, putting your work out there and probably tied up with that is perfectionism as well. Is it good enough to put out there? It's that whole sort of self-doubt, getting over yourself and um, yeah, that's definitely been a big one for me to to kind of get get over. I mean, when I first started posting, I would literally put a post out and I'd hide for about you know four or five days until I was ready to see if anybody had, had commented on it. You know, it was a long time ago when I first started. But um, yeah, I definitely think visibility is a big thing to get over. You kind of be your soul to people, really. So yeah, definitely one of my biggest challenge areas, I think. Yes, but I suppose it's that balance between spending time in the studio, because obviously that's where, as artists, that's where we love spending the most of our time. But then we know if we want to, you know, be working artists, professional artists, and actually selling our work, we have to spend time marketing it and putting Absolutely. ourselves out there. And um, I guess for a lot of artists, that's kind of the scariest thing, because, you, you know, you're putting your heart and soul on the line in public arena. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know how important that is. And, you know, just relating to kind of what you've learned with, with, with Fuller and I, has that helped you sort of ease the way into, into putting yourself out there? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, I think, I think just having a group of other artists around you is such an important thing. Um, I mean, at my first studio, we had like 15, 20 different artists there. And that was great to all bounce off each other and you just uplift each other. But then I kind of changed studios and things and, I don't have that in my current environment, um, but then teaming up with you guys and having, you know, I've, I've seen your free group and your paid group, well, a, couple, a couple of groups, um, but to have those people there that you can literally bounce off, talk to, you've got an issue, it, and it just shortcuts you. you, you I think if you, you're probably in any form, whether it be, you know, any group, short, you know, if there's an opportunity to shortcut yourself there and just not second guess yourself all the way, why wouldn't you do that? You know, yeah. yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Next, uh, to, to, sorry, Paula. 
I was just to say it makes a huge, huge difference. Because um, I know in the artist communities around me, everybody's, you know, gung-ho about galleries. And I was sort of the, the black sheep of insisting that the internet was the future. Um, and of course, now I don't have to pivot when we're all stuck inside because my business is already online. But it, it um, definitely, it's harder to walk alone because you do have to, you either feel alone or you question everything you do. Is it the right move because I'm doing things different from the group? So yeah, it helps to have people around that community. It's one of the things that Lee and I were very um, focused on building of a community of people who had sort of similar goals. The details would be different, but similar goals in working together, getting the business online, defining how you want to be as an artist, um, yeah. as a professional. So yeah, good. I'm glad that it worked for you. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And, and, and talking about having fellow artists online, we've got quite a few people online. I just want to say welcome to everybody who's joined us. Uh, you know, we have Katarina and Belle and um, Sandy and I don't know, loads of other people have joined us. Amanda's also popped on. And if you guys have got any questions for Julie, please pop them in the comments because we'll get to those later. I can see there already are some, but we'll get to those later. I just mm -hmm. wanted to um, pay sort of homage to our audience. Lovely to have you guys jumping in. Yes, exactly. So okay. what other questions have we got for Paula? I'm no, sorry, not for Paula. For Julie. <laughs> for Julie. <laughs> Uh, Let's see. Julie, what is the best advice that you've got for an artist who is just starting out? What was the maybe what's maybe a better way to ask is what's the what is the one thing you wish you knew that you know now? One thing that I wish I knew. Don't try and do it on your own, really. It probably ties back into the last question. Seriously. Uh, yeah. Um but also as well, just listen to yourself. And I think listen to get, yeah, by all means get help, but kind of listen to your intuition as to what your next step might be. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it, it's really good having, being in a group and having that bouncing off people experience. But I also think it's quite easy to get caught up in what other people think you should do. Certainly in my early days, I was, I was painting before I discovered acoustics and all kind of, oh, that's amazing. Oh, do you know what you should do? Pets, or you could, should do cats, or you should do, you know, oh, could oh, you draw me a picture of an aeroplane? And you'd be like, no, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's very easy to kind of, you know, end up drawing things that don't actually resonate with you at all. And, um, and I'd kind of run off and someone would say, oh, you should try this. And I'd run off and I'd try that. And then somebody else would say, oh, you should try this. Or I'd run off and do something else. Um, so yeah, I think I think definitely kind of list just going with your gut feel really is probably feel it's the right thing to be doing. Um, but equally, you know, it's that balance between having a group of supportive people around you, but also taking that time to listen to yourself as well. Yeah, that's yeah. powerful that's stuff. <laughs> um, let's see, what's your biggest takeaway after working with us? We kind of talked about that, but is there something that stands out for you? Um, that maybe has made the big difference in your life, uh, in your direction, in terms of your art, or? Oh, I just think having that safety net there, of somebody that you can just go and, I mean, the Jam Group, as an example, is a perfect example. I love the Mastermind's been up through that two, three times now. Um, but that Jam Group, is just, it's just that moment where you're like, oh, I need to i've got a clouded head i can't work out what but you know i just need a, a sounding board what's your, what are your thoughts and views and comments on that and for me that is it's invaluable i love that um ability to be able to go and bounce off somebody because certainly i mean depends what your environment is i suppose if you're surrounded by lots of artists around you that's another matter but certainly my immediate you know people around me don't have any um you know the, the, i haven't got any artists within us that i can kind of go and relate to i Certainly in terms of my own work, I haven't got anybody I can go and get first-hand experience from. Um, to, so, yeah, it's, that for me is a really good place that I just know I can go and, <laughs> probably from your perspective, it's not a good thing, but I can go and <laughs> no, bring it's great. One. It's great from our perspective. Yeah. I mean, that's why we created Jam, you know. For anybody who doesn't know what Jam is, because not a lot of people do know what Jam is. You know, we kind of, we, 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 we almost like the exclusivity of it and keeping it under wraps. Yeah. But for anybody who doesn't know what Jam is, Jam is um, our subscription group where people pay a monthly subscription um, and all sorts of crazy stuff goes on in there. You know, we've got trainings, but I think the most important thing, as Julie says, it's a place where 
you can come and ask us literally anything on any given day. And, uh, you know, we get back to you guys as soon as possible. And not only do we, but the other artists also rally around and give that, you know, give that support. Um, and I think the really important thing to remember about it is, is there's no kind of judgment in there. You never feel like anybody's judging you or, or, or kind of forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. I think there's this great sort of camaraderie of lifting each other up um, in a way that supports you and what you want to do rather than saying, oh, I think you should do this, you know. So that's, all, that, that's what jam is all about. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know. Yes, exactly. Um, we're going to hop over to the comments. Um, but definitely before I forget, Julie, we want to know where we can find you, your art, um, and all that. So we'll get you once we're done to pop the links in the comments. But can you tell us, you know, what your URL is, where people can best search for you? Yeah. Um, so probably the best place, to, if you go to my website, which is www.rtheaven.com, nice and easy. Um, everything's linked up on there, like everything I do. Um, uh, and then if you go to the contact page, I've got all of my social medias are down at the bottom of my contact page, but I'm on, I'm on most of them really. I kind of share slightly different content on each one, but I'm on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. So YouTube's a really good place to go because you can see videos. A lot of people don't understand how you would even begin to paint the wax. I've got loads of videos on there, with just little snippets of different ways. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably my best, your best bet, artyheaven.com. Beautiful. Awesome. That's brilliant. Because somebody's actually just said that. Uh, well, Katarina says, I can feel your passion, Julie, which is lovely. And then Bella saying, do a live course because I'm intrigued. So, Belle, you can actually go and see Julie's work live. Because um, you, you were going live every day on your Facebook page, weren't you? Yep. Yeah, I've been doing that. Um, yes, so I haven't been doing live classes that people kind of choose, you know, but certainly live on my Facebook page I've been doing. And I've got online courses and, and a membership as well that people can just jump onto. Um, there's lots of different ways to work with me. Or just contact me and I'm always happy to arrange Brilliant. something with people. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any comments. So um, if you're watching on the replay, guys, feel free to put your comments and questions um, in the comments section and uh, we'll go through it and, you know, make sure you guys can reach Julie and get to know her and her amazing art and her offerings and stuff. Um, I know I had personally planned at some point to hop on over to one of her retreats. For me, it's quite a hop, um, but still... <laughs> That would be a heck of a lot of fun. So um, she can she can really light you up about encaustic and about finding joy in creating. Um, and you know you could start if you have very little art experience, you could still start with encaustic right from the beginning. It's an incredible medium to work with, and you're a wonderful teacher, Julie. I've seen a lot of your videos and uh, really engaging and make it really easy to sort of step in and learn some stuff. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's lovely, Julie. And I definitely do look forward to coming um, and spending some time in person with you because obviously, I mean, I work with resin and I think some of the, there's some similarities in, 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 in the work that we do, although the medium is so different. So that'll be quite fun, us waving our blow torches together side yeah. by side. And we better watch out what we do with the Prosecco on the other, in the other hand. <laughs> Don't want to sit nice to ourselves. <laughs> yes, my wax and wine nights have been very good. Yes, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is brilliant. Thank you so much, Julie. As always, an absolute pleasure to have you in our space. Thank you so much for sharing so openly with us. Thank you very much. Awesome. Cool. And we'll see you all tomorrow, same time, different channel for the next um, interview with artists with me and Lee. It'll be on Lee's personal page and uh, we'll be interviewing, I don't remember who, but it'll be somebody who's just as exciting as Julie. Um, so stay tuned and follow along. Bye. See you later. Bye.